Hey guys, Alex Mazukin from Mr. Build It. Welcome to my garage. The project of the day that we're wrapping up is this mudroom section for a typical two car, one car garage. I'm so glad that this is one project scratch off of my honey to do list. So without wasting time, let's go check out how I made this. Let's go. You know, when uh, figuring out which materials I want to use for the project, <laughs> a couple ideas hit the mind. Uh, finish grade. Uh, maple or birch, plywood, three-quarter inch stuff. I thought it would be great. Uh, it paints very well. The only reason I didn't go with it is, uh, well, the majority of these mudroom sections are always kind of made up of the same material, that, that really high-density MDF. So, and because the place really gets trashed and it's gonna get painted white, I didn't want to tinker with either A, spending money on expensive solid stock, um, or B, I didn't want to tinker with edge banding the exposed plywood on the sides. So I just thought the easiest solution would have been just to use the classic 4x8 sheet of MDF. I think in my local store they run about 30 bucks a sheet. I use like a sheet and a half, so it was actually really budget proof. Now for the size. Uh, now, the garage is considered a two-car garage, but ever since I put a dividing wall up, it kind of took some space away from it. Now, the depth of the garage is the irritating part. You know, you can take a compact or mid-compact SUV, park it in there, or a sedan. If you're not careful and really using your areas, you can really take away from the, the walking room into the house, because the door's right in front of the, of the garage. So, I didn't want to take away too much room. So, I figured an average seat uh, I created it to be about 14 inches out. 14 inches is enough for your butt to sit on, it's enough for those bins to be inside, um, and it's just, it's, it's not too big that it would take away any walking space. So 14 inches is the depth that I did. The height of the overall thing was really up to whatever I wanted to do, so ideally I kind of lined it up with that roughly eight feet tall to the top of the trim of the door into the house. I think they're good, clean lines that aesthetically looks really good. And then the top bins, well, with those, I didn't have to pre-plan anything. Uh, I think I created them a little bit uh, narrower, no, not as d deep, sorry. Um, and so the bottom were 14, the top were 12, and width, I just split it in three. I, I said, you know, we could throw anything up there. And as you saw in the pictures, you know, it, it all works really well. So for the assembling part, uh, that was really, really basic. We just used good old fashioned Tybon 2, Tybon 3, wood glue, um, and then just shot some brad nails just to really kind of clamp it and hold it together. Uh, it was so basic. I mean, you can go as far as creating dados, which to me I, I find really cool, but really silly if you're gonna use dados on MDF. Um, Sure, it's a little bit stronger and you have that peace of mind, but I don't know, it's just, you know, MDF is so basic and cheap, you might as well just get the job done and caulk it all around. So that's what I did. Um, oh, and, uh, no, that's it, that's it. <laughs> now for the installation part, um, I basically took uh, scraps of a one by three and I drilled it right into the studs um, on top and I, put it on top and then countersank uh, some holes uh, with screws, butting it right in. And that's really from keeping it from coming out forward. Um, and then the cabinet that was touching the side of the wall, I found a stud, drilled it into the stud. So that was my major anchoring point. And then on the left-hand side, I had the little dividing brace that was standing there, that little um, angled wall. And obviously that's to you know reinforce. So my kids don't climb on it and try to hang off of it. So. You know, that was, that was just the basic way. Then the base of the cabinet was kind of done the same way. The, the one by three was uh, attached to the studs of the wall. The cabinet sat on top, screws on top to kind of anchor it in, and then on, off to the side, and then obviously the base is already sitting, so it's not going anywhere. The one thing I did do differently is for the base, you saw I had a toe kick or whatnot, but um, because the garage floor is slanted, um, the back is sitting flush, the front is tilted forward. So I took a wedge and I put it underneath it to keep it upright. And you know, it looks fine. It, even though it has a, like a quarter inch hole uh, or whatnot. Actually, I'm glad that that happened because if I ever wanna you know, water hose my garage floor, I don't, I don't have to worry about that stuff going underneath the cabinet. So for the prep work, when you're about ready to start painting this thing, what I did was, um, I'll show you, I'll tell you what, I, what you're supposed to do and I'll tell you what I did wrong. 
Um, I got all the, uh, I didn't have to really sand the sides of them because overall they're, they're fine. Um, the edges where you cut somewhere along the, the way, I, I had some saw marks, so you had to use like 80 grit, 120 to 220 grit and whatnot to uh, get rid of those saw marks. Cut the edges, um, you know, make sure that the, when your table saw came across, if you use a crappy blade like I did, uh, you had a lot of budget of tear out, so just use some sandpaper, kind of create your own round, round over edge, if you will. Um, and then you're supposed to caulk um, all the butt joints or the parts that's actually touching the wall to give it that seamless, clean look. It's, I mean, the whole world is, is, is being held with caulk, unfortunately, in construction. But, so I caulked it all the way around. Now, that's what you're supposed to do. Here's what I did wrong. I got ahead of myself. I did not want to wait. I didn't practice patience. So before the caulk had a chance to dry, that's when I took the liberty of starting cleaning up all those edges to create a round over and dust went into the caulk. And I was so irritated because you can't get that stuff out, uh, which I think the only way to do it is just add more caulk on top. Um, that's the only thing I can come off my mind. If you have any other ideas, write a comment down below because I literally don't know how to fix that problem. So don't do that. Let the caulk dry. And then make sure that you don't have any dust in the area. So do that. And then for painting, um, because MDF is a raw material, literally that stuff is going to absorb everything like a sponge. So put down a primer, um, good water-based primer, put a coat down, you saw me spraying it. Um, and then um, after that, put whatever water-based paint you want on it. Trust me, you don't want to waste your paint. It'll just keep absorbing and absorbing and absorbing. So primer down, then paint. And then um, you'll have some of the parts after your first coat, you know, it'll be kind of rough when you when you run your hand on it. So then after that, take like your 220 sandpaper and then give it a quick little hand wipe down. Um, or you can just use your orbital sander to kind of cut any of that flaky grain down. Um, that, therefore, the next coat of paint you put on is actually going to be buttery smooth. So, pro tip. Okay, first casualty of the project, the cleaning up part. I was uh, taking this drill bit and pushing it right into the slot there. And when I was doing so, my finger went through and went, the nail uh, went underneath this small little drill bit. And so, yeah, we got blood. You know, you get through the entire project, nobody gets hurt, and then you clean up. Rules. Very important. Never clean up. You'll be super safe. We lost a lot of good people to cleaning, so don't do it. Well, that's it for me this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit me with that thumbs up. I want to know if these are the things you'd like to see. If you have any questions or any comments, hit them down here below. I love, love, love interacting with you guys. Please be nice. And uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button right over there. I put a video out every single week, and I don't want you to miss a single one. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm on Instagram. Link down below in the description. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.